Good morning. Good morning. My name is Crystal. And I'm Kevin. And you're gleaming with the grays. Welcome. Set my timer. <laughs> um, you can see we've got some new shirts on. Redeemed. They say redeemed. Um, and that's what uh, today's devotion was going to be yeah. on. The redemption of uh, what Jesus did for us. That's know? right. That's right. You will notice that I probably won't be talking much. I have some dental work that needs to be done. And my mouth is having some issues on this side. So I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet. And when I do talk, I'm going to try not to move my mouth so much. So I apologize if you can't hear me as well as normal. Um, just doing the best I can. She's so. driving on. She's driving on, pressing through. <laughs> so, I really hope you enjoyed your weekend. Oh yes, and I'm. You know, I was outside. You know, with the chickens as always early this morning, and it looked like it was gonna be a very beautiful day. Every day is beautiful, but meaning that um. It's like clear skies. You know, you have a couple clouds. I don't think we're going to get any uh, rain today. That's I don't good, think so. Because we really hope to go to the beach. Yeah, do some family some family time. Do a family day. Now, I got a question. Because Crystal and I were in a, a debate about uh, oatmeal. You know, and um, she happened to eat oatmeal this morning. And how do you make oatmeal? Now, when I was little growing up, poor thing, <laughs> we had the Quaker oats, you know, the, the big container. The real, regular rolled yeah. oats, yeah. And the way I used, we used to make it was a couple of ways. You know, you put it in a bowl, put water, you know, you put water in it, mix it up. Well, I actually boil the water on the stove, pour it in the oatmeal, mix it up. You know, good to go. When the microwaves came around, you know, you need to microwave the water. And you just pour it in the bowl on the oatmeal according to eyeball. You know, you eyeball it. Crystal told me that that's not the proper way, especially when doing uh, the uh, regular roast. The, the instant, the instant, the instant one. Doesn't matter. You got to cook them oats in the water or milk or whatever. They got to absorb some of that liquid. <laughs> you have some hard behind oats. <laughs> Hey, sometimes he got crunchy be, oats in his oatmeal. Sometimes, you know, or sometimes it's, the consistency is not may not be right. You gotta eyeball it right, you know. But she put me on to this. The concept was cook got, the oats. Well, actually, uh, when you take the oatmeal package and you tear it open, you dump it in the uh, the bowl. You fill it to the fill line that's on the package. I'm like, what? It's I didn't two know there thirds, wasn't. It's two thirds a cup. But they have a fill line on there, and it's like the perfect amount, actually. I found it's out. It's two thirds a cup. Yeah. For those that don't use the fill line. All right, I'm just used to doing the man thing. Arr, I rip it open, put it in a bowl, eyeball it. <laughs> but they don't cook in the. You just stir it up and stir it. They didn't get heated up or cooked or nothing. Yeah, sometimes it's a hit or miss. <laughs> That's that military eating them uh, hey, MREs. You. Yeah, it's hit or miss. Hey, man, it's, it's, it's done. I eat it. Oh, my <laughs> word. So, but, Sweet um, man. Well, speaking on Sometimes that. Sometimes we use milk, too, don't we? Yes. Speaking on that, what is your favorite uh, flavor of instant oatmeal, if yeah. you eat it? I mean, you like what? The. I like, man, I like that apple cinnamon. Oh, man. I like all the ones with the fruits. All of them. The peaches, the peach and cream. We like to get the lower sugar ones, though. Yeah. Yeah. They got a lot of sugar in them. Mm -hmm. And then I don't usually add but a little bit of honey to mine because um, I have allergies, really, is why I add it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't add no extra sugar and then nothing to it. Did you know that oatmeal has more sugar, one pack of oatmeal has more sugar than cinnamon toast crunch? No, uh. -uh. Yeah. We're going to have to Our son that. just told us. That one package of oatmeal has more sugar than cinnamon toast crunch. Anybody that knows me knows that, in my opinion, cereal might as well be a candy bar. It's not breakfast, it's dessert. Uh -huh. So to find this yes. information out is a bit disturbing to me. I'm going to have to check on this because if that's the case, then I just had a candy bar for breakfast. 
<laughs> Instead of a bowl of oatmeal. Yeah. Darla says maple and brown sugar, lower sugar. Hey, that's maple, what she, I like. That's what I had this. That's morning. what she had this morning. Maple and brown sugar. Hey, Mama Darla. Hi. Gotta stay off that candy. I gotta stay off that candy, huh? I'm calling Grandma Darla. <laughs> hey. Baby says you better stay off of that candy, Grandma I'm Darla. You eat it all. He yeah. said he'll come and help you eat it all if you don't. <laughs> well. We gonna see. open in prayer. Yes. All right. But thank you, Lord, for blessing us with the wonderful, beautiful day that you ordained for us. Thank you for your word and your promises. And we ask, Lord, for wisdom as we dive into your word, Lord, and let not our words, but your words be spoken. Let that which you want to convey, Lord, fall on all those who are hearing. And we ask, Lord, these things that you etch it once you reveal to us he etch it on our hearts our mind and our spirit so that it may become a firm foundation lord that we may use to fulfill the calling you have on our lives lord and that lord we give you all the praise the honor and glory in jesus name amen amen okay um before we start i want to uh this was pressed on my uh, heart last week and i meant to give it to you friday but now I know why um, I forgot it. Does this to start, you know, for all you women out there uh, that's are watching, it's to help you get through your first day of the week, Monday. You know, it's kind of like a... Who hates Mondays? Oh, man. Who I, dis... I shouldn't say that. Who dislikes Mondays? I like Mondays. Mm. They're fresh starts in a new week. That's what, I like Mondays, too. It's a new week. It's a fresh start. But some people have to get up before Jesus and the sun and run around like chickens with their heads cut off and got a million things to do. And Mondays aren't so fun for them. Yeah, because, you know, you spend the weekend relaxing and then you got to get back into that mode. But, you know, after like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you already been in that mode for so long till it's easy. So it's like you're having to jump start a new routine mm -hmm. every week, beginning mm -hmm. of every week. But um, what I want to do is I want to give thanks to the first proverb to the uh, first Proverbs 31 women in our lives, to our mothers, Elizabeth and Darla. We love you. We love you, moms. Thank you so much for your sacrifice and obedience. You chose the hard yes over the easy no. You chose life. You sacrificed at a minimum nine months of your life dedicated to faith and belief. You had no idea what to expect, but you chose not to abort. That is very important. That is, thank you so much. Without that, we wouldn't be here today. And to all the Proverbs 31 women, we salute you and thank you. To those who don't have children or a significant other, we thank you as well for your sacrifices and pressing on in a world that sees you as less. You don't have children, yet you think of your nieces and nephews as your own and shower them with love and gifts letting them know they are loved by more than just their parents. You love on other people's children as well. So thank you. Don't stop. Your perseverance in these matters will be rewarded to you in due time. So once again, thank you to all those, 30, those Proverbs 31 women. Thank you, Mama Darla and Mom Elizabeth. Thank you. you said I love you and stuff. We love you too. Love you too. All right. All right. Let's get into the word. Yeah. Okay. What we what we reading? Um. Actually, where does everyone need to turn to? We're we going to Ephesians. Your show is so sweet. Aww. Uh, so Ephesians one, seven. Seven through fourteen. Yes. That's after Galatians, right? Yeah, I remember it GE, mm -hmm. like the General Electric, Galatians, mm -hmm. Ephesians. That's how I remember it. And then Deuteronomy is after it? No. no. That's Old Testament. <laughs> <laughs> that boy over there talking about GED. Is Deuteronomy after it? No, boy. He's playing, though. I get that. When you get there, give me a uh, God is great. God is great. It'll be, it'll be all right if I get there first. I, book, I bookmarked it. I cheated. That's not cheating. 
Okay, Ephesians 1. God is great. God is great. All right, I'm going to go ahead and read it there. Mm -hmm. All right, that's Ephesians 1, uh, 7. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he richly poured out on us with all wisdom and understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2, 14. Okay. He made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he purposed in Christ as a plan for the right time to bring everything together in Christ, both things in heaven and things on earth in him. In him, we have also received an inheritance because we were predestined according to the plan of the one who works out everything in agreement with the purpose of his will so that we who had already put our hope in Christ might bring praise to his glory. In him, you also were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and when you believed. Man, that's, that's strong right there. Let me go back over that. In him, you also were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and when you believed. The Holy Spirit is the down payment of your inheritance until the redemption of the possession to the praise of his glory. Amen. Amen. You are redeemed. If you love Jesus and you've made him Lord of your life, you're redeemed. And not only are you redeemed, but you've been given a down payment for your eternal security in the Holy Spirit. He didn't have to do it. But oh, how wonderful that is. I to cannot guide even us. imagine living my life without the Holy Spirit as a believer. Like, I lived my life without the Holy Spirit unsaved. And it led to a bunch of turmoil, depression, anxiety, fear, and a whole host of issues in my life. So, to have the Holy Spirit, I now can walk in obedience and submission. And I, and I see things I wouldn't see otherwise because my flesh wouldn't want me to see those things. And I can't even imagine not having the Holy Spirit as a believer. Yes. You know, um, during one of our Bible studies at home, Kathy had said something that really, uh, a revelation that really stuck to me to where, like, um, she said, well, you know, when some people say, well, how do I know if I'm hearing from the Holy Spirit or uh, what does it sound like? Uh, she gave the example. She said, have you ever had that feeling, that gut feeling, like, oh, you shouldn't do this? No, I'm not talking about, you know, like those things that, that cartoon says there's one person on your shoulder and another person on your shoulder telling you, asking you to do different things. But that gut feeling telling you, man, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. That's, that's the counselor. That's the guide. That's the Holy Spirit. And how many times have you said, man, I knew I should have listened to my gut. I just knew I should have listened. That's that Holy Spirit in you. That's that down payment. Yeah, some people call him something. Something told me I yeah. shouldn't have done this. Get it right. Something told me I should have done this. Something told me I should have went here. That something is the Holy Spirit. Yes. Your great. conscience you know, uh, some people call it a conscience. I, I I believe that that's how the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Yes, and we need the redemption power of Jesus. Matter of fact, before we go on, can you um just give us a definition of what it means to be redeemed? From the Wycliffe Bible Dictionary, deliverance. Redemption means deliverance from some form of bondage on the basis of the payment of a price by a redeemer. Redemption is a concept basic to the biblical view of salvation. In the New Testament, redemption is strictly a divine activity which is affected by and through Jesus Christ. Though the redemptive activity of Christ has its physical manifestations like healing, its primary significance is the spiritual ransom of sinners from their bondage to sin. 
the deliverance of the sinner is secured on the basis of the ransom price paid to God the Father by Jesus Christ in his death on the cross. What we need to realize as redeemed people is that the price for our sins was paid by Jesus when he was crucified on the cross. There's nothing that we can do in our own effort to appease God and please him. And, and you know, we, without Jesus, we are estranged in our relationship with God the Father. So if we have belief in Jesus and, and we walk with Jesus and we made him Lord of our life and we're sealed with the Holy Spirit, now we can come into a relationship with the Father again, not because we've done anything, but because Jesus paid the price. That's the gift. That's the gospel. That's the good news. That's the good news. You can't fix the problem, but Jesus can. Now, I, um, the Holy Spirit put this on my heart to um, share with you a, a, some, a, a physical, I guess something that you can see in the natural to relate to uh, redemption. Uh, so much that I had to get up early in the morning and go to Walmart and get these. So uh, remember when we were young that we used to play with magnets? Uh, now just imagine, just, just for uh, purposes, demonstration. You know, demonstration purposes, that this magnet right here is, is God and this is us. Now remember when we um, play with magnets that one side is never sticks. It's no matter how much you try to put it together, it just won't go together. It repels. Now, just think of God cannot, sin cannot be around God. God, sin cannot exist. God cannot be around He cannot sin. be around sin. Just think of it as being like that magnet and that power coming off the magnet. So it repels. It repels. Like, like his glory. It's, it's repelling it. But only way this magnet, just say us, can connect with the other is if we turn our ways. Turn our ways. That's our timer. Yes. If we uh, turn from our ways, you know, our, wicked, our ways. wicked ways, and then what happens? We get that permanent, strong connection. That's right. That permanent. And how do we get that connection? You can't get it by your own means, by your own merits. You have to have Jesus. You, you have, have to have, have Jesus. Faith. And faith once that comes, Jesus. and once that connection is made, you cannot be separated. Cannot be separated. Nope. That's what Paul tells us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Yes. Not so even demons, sickness, nothing. Yes. And just think of his, his glory fills all of heaven. So it's not like you can get so close and just stare at no. It, ooh. <laughs> it's just like that magnet. You can't get close. You can't get yeah, close. Yeah, we're not talking about salvation by works here. We believe in salvation by faith and faith in Jesus Christ. And when you have that faith in Jesus Christ, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is your assurance that you will spend eternity with the Father when you leave here. When you ask for forgiveness and you repent, like he said, when you turn from your wicked ways and you repent, now you are washed clean by the blood and made new and you can move forward. Yes, and when so when the when our heavenly father see looks at you and see you, he sees his son. Right. He sees his son. He sees you clothed in him. And you just you can't just know what Jesus did. You have to believe and accept it. You have to accept it. There's many people that believe in Jesus Christ. They believe that this person existed. They believe that he worked miracles back in those days. They believed that he could have been the son of God, but they don't make them him Lord of their life. They don't live their life by walking in obedience and submission to the Holy Spirit. There is a difference between someone who believes in Jesus Christ and someone who believes that he existed. Yes. There. Yeah. Um, and on that, you have to, once again, you have to accept the gift to receive it. And I truly believe 
there is an expiration on it. You know, um, you, you can't just sit there and say, well, I'm going to wait until he comes back and then I'm going to just give myself. No, that doesn't work like that. And the Bible talks about that. Paul talks about those that are afforded the opportunity to hear the gospel. If they reject it, their mind will be darkened. Yes. Um, that basically means if, if God extends his hand to you and you push it away, you may not have no, another opportunity to, to, for him to reach out to you again. So if God is calling to you and reaching out to you, do not push his hand away. He may not come back again. Yes. Um, I have another example in that also. Uh, where, let's just say, you know, like I go to uh, this place in Port Orange and Crystal really likes um, the pistachio muffins. Oh, man, they're so delicious. Especially the top of them. Ooh, man. And so I go to I go there, and which is, man, it may take like 30, 40 minutes to get there. So I go through a lot of uh, trouble to go there. But, you know, I love my wife, and I want to do something nice for her. You know, get her this gift that I know she will cherish. So I go get this package of pistachio uh, muffins. And I tell her, hey, here's these, uh, the, here's these muffins for you. <laughs> she says, yeah, farines. She says, okay, just sit it on the table. I get to them. Okay. I sit it on the, on the table on the counter. Day one go by. She looks at it. Don't go in. Don't dig into them. Day two goes by. She doesn't look at it. You know, three. And I'm looking. I wonder if she's going to accept the gift. You know, I did a lot for her. To go out there, it wasn't like I just went out, just stepped outside, you know. Um, and it's not really all about what I did, but even so. And she still won't get it. She just won't eat it. Seven days later, they're crusty. There's mold growing on them. They're not even edible at that point. And most of the time, knowing me, just outside of I probably just go ahead and eat it all together. He's going to take my gift, And y'all. then she's going to be like, well, why didn't, well, why did you, uh, Take it back. Why did you eat it? What, where's my gift? You waited too long. You yeah. waited too long. So just think about that. Um, Jesus is calling to you now. He's He's calling to you now. Are you going to draw to him? Or are you going to sit there and wait? Are you just going to procrastinate on the gift that he's giving you? That you have. That you couldn't even purchase. A gift that is you eternal. Couldn't, you couldn't get it if you tried. You could be the best person that you could possibly be and still end up in hell if you don't have faith in Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man goes to the Father except through him. So when we all stand before the, the judge and he's determining who who makes it into heaven and who doesn't, your good works aren't going to be what gets you there. Um, yeah, and... Um... And on that note, just think about it. Does the clay pot have the right mm-hmm. to tell the potter what it wants to be? Or that the potter is wrong? I doubt it. <laughs> Since we're talking about this, I just want to encourage some, some people who are redeemed, who do believe, who may be walking through a season of maybe disappointment. Uh, maybe you fell short or maybe God closed the door you thought that he was you know opening for you or maybe you um made a wrong choice and missed the mark we are sealed with the holy spirit when you when you understand this you understand that in walking in submission to the holy spirit you're allowing him to work in and through you so it's no longer about what you do but what he is doing through you and when you really get that into your heart you understand there is no condemnation in Christ. When you mess up, you repent. And as a righteous man falls seven times, he gets back up. You dust yourself off, you fix your crown, and you keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. You cannot sit and stew in your mistakes. We all make mistakes. But praise God, Romans 8.28 says that. Um, Lord, please bring righteous it back man, to get me. down. No. Romans 8.28. Um, I'm glad you know where is that. I, I got I, I had it and then it just ran away from my brain. Five minutes. Got it. We know that all things work That's together all for the things. good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Right. 
So no. you make a mistake, God's gonna work it out. It's okay. It may, you know, it looks like a mistake, but there's another reason for it. He can use it. He can use it. That's how good God is. He can use evil and bring good. And if how he do couldn't we use mm -hmm. evil to bring good, Jesus dying on the cross would have meant nothing. Yeah. But it is the only thing that brings us into relationship with the Father. Mm -hmm. And how do we know that this is true? How can we hold on to that? He gave us a down payment on that That's promise. That's right. That's right. The Holy Spirit. That's right. So you may trip, but you're going to get back up in Him. That's right. So with that, we just want to encourage you. If you're sitting and you're stewing, it's time to get up. Dust yourself off. Repent. Apologize. See, allow the Holy Spirit to show you where you went wrong and, and continue to move forward. Or maybe you're someone who doesn't understand the difference between believing Jesus and believing in Jesus. It's time. He's knocking on a door. And there's no knob on his side of this door. There's no knob. He's just knocking. The knob is on your side. You mm -hmm. have to be willing to open the door up to him. Yes. So if you feel him drawing you close today, draw near to him and he will draw near to you. We just want to encourage you wherever you are in your walk, just to keep moving forward, keep walking in submission and obedience to the Holy Spirit. Yes, and please, please, for those of you that are on the fences or you know someone that's just totally not believing, don't wait. Don't wait. If Jesus said that he would come like a thief in the night. No one knows when a thief comes. Matter of fact, as soon as we probably hit this power button, he can come. That's true. As soon as you probably go in the kitchen and fix, you your, fix your coffee, he could be coming down on the clouds. Just like that. And we, nowadays, we don't think about that. So don't hesitate. Don't wait. Because we don't know when he's going to come back. But when he's coming through those clouds... <laughs> That'd probably be your life. That'd be done and over with. You know, you, you don't have, have no other know. chances. That's right. So if you have any prayer requests, please go ahead and type them in the comments. Mm -hmm. If you're not with us now and you have prayer requests later, let us know. All right. Are there any requests? None. Nope. Okay. Not really. God, God, I thank you for this time in your word. I thank you, Lord, for our friends, Joe. And her family, Lord, I pray that you would give her strength, your grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Lord, pick up her chin and remind her that she is yours. That even though we fall, we get back up in Jesus' name. Lord God, I pray for my grandfather that you would help him with his breathing issues. I pray for my, my stepdad's brother, Tom, that you would continue to heal him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Lord God. I pray for my friend, Miss Anne, that her kidney problems will be gone and over and done with in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, today I come before you humbly for myself and this tooth. Lord, you know the problems with it. Problem after problem after problem. Lord, we just ask that you heal her, Lord. That you that, that you place upon those who are uh, gift place upon those doctors, Lord, the gift of uh, repairing, Lord, repairing the tooth, Lord, and that prior to that, Lord, that you just heal her, just comfort her from the pain, Lord, from actually from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet, Lord, and we give you all the glory and all the praise, Lord. We thank you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. God bless. Bye.